Welcome to Daily Faith. I am so glad you're joining us wherever you're watching us at around the world. We love you guys. We appreciate you being part of our Daily Faith family. Thank God for a medium that allows us to speak to people like today, our pastor friends who be from North Carolina, and um, we can speak here and have folk watches in Australia all at the same time. It is an amazing day we're living in, and um, we must keep our freedoms. We must st- stand for our liberties. And um, because if, whatever you don't fight for, you're going to lose. I promise you every single time. And um, if you're watching on Facebook and other mediums, uh, other social platforms like that, hit share right now and, and, and invite some of your friends along. And somewhere my son tells me, I'm not, I'm not very good at this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to technical things. Um, I told you yesterday that I got a new credit card December the 1st that I couldn't. I tried to dis- activate it. And all I got was frustration. So I said that. And my daughter came out to one of our offices and said, can I have your wallet, please? So I gave her my wallet and kept on talking. And about three minutes later, she came back with my credit card. She says, it's activated. So what it did was it gave me an activated card, but I felt really, really stupid when she gave it back to me with that, you know, uppity knowing smirk that they know how to do it and I don't know how to do it. So anyway, that's my complaint for the day. But we are just so thankful for you. I want to thank all of you that gave as part of our Giving Tuesday a couple of days ago. We are so excited. We are right at the point of having the funds to to, to send this container to Moldova. And uh, this is the third one we've sent in about six weeks. The first one was for furniture for the new house, if you recall. Um, we took in 24 new kids uh, about six, eight weeks ago. Um, uh, there was an orphanage about three hours north of the capital. And they called us and said, would you please come and um, look at, meet these kids? There was 24 kids. Listen now, no contact, no mom, no dad, no, 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 no one. And um, they're, they're going on the streets. And we had a house that was on its way to completion. And, and we said, oh, Lord, how do we do this? And we just took the step of faith and started finishing the, the house. The, the, the toilets need to be put in, the, in the, all the kitchen stuff. And um, we began to buy furniture here. We sent that container over. And then the, the next couple of weeks later, we sent a container with Christmas presents. So the Christmas container is arriving next week, we hope, in Moldova. And we have all of this stuff in our warehouse right now, pallets and pallets and pallets of, of warm clothes, blankets, the stuff that keep people alive in the winter time. And um, so we are believing God for the money to send that container over to Moldova. And by doing so, we will have all the material we need to give our kids in Moldova the tools by which they can reach and love people. The whole thing of our ministry, and my son can put up the uh, pictures of the, the village in Moldova. We have a village called Vatra, and we bought this a few years ago. And uh, there are six gorgeous homes, and the kids live in these homes. We put them back into school and college and university. And um, from that center you're looking at right now, they are going out from there. Apart from going to school, etc., and being part of active church ministries, they leave these homes and go into the villages where there is dire poverty. And they give out food and they give out clothes and, they, and they, they care for people. And by doing so, they bring the gospel to them. And that is what we do at the Orphan's Hands. And you are part of that miracle and we are so thankful for you. So all of you that gave in Giving Tuesday, I, I, I know Giving Tuesday is past, but um, Giving Thursday sounds like a real good idea to me if you'd like to help us to keep this thing moving forward because God is doing great things. We welcome all those folk watching in Destiny TV, Integrity TV, and the TV network, the TCT network, Channel 29 and Digital 34. We love you guys. We are appreciative of you taking the time to tune in to us. And I forgot to tell you, there's a bell. My son says there's a bell on your screen if you're watching on the social media platforms. And you can hit that bell, and every time we come on the air, it will, it will alert you to let you know we're coming. So if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. God bless you. I am so excited to have my guest with me. He's a friend first, and he comes on our show as, as much as we can get him. He's a busy man, but he pastors a great church. And this coming Sunday, 
we are going to be with him in his church and we are going to announce that Christ alive. We are coming to there in Newton, North Carolina. And if you're watching this anywhere within driving distance of Newton, North Carolina, we'll be talking about it more going through the program. I would love to meet you personally this coming Sunday morning. And we're going to be talking and, 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 and um, positioning this program in that area quite heavily this next few days. And we want you to come and be with us. And I want to shake your hand and meet you. It's not far from Charlotte. So you, if, if some of our friends in the Charlotte area, why don't you drive down to, or over or up? I don't know where Newton is in relationship to Charlotte, but whatever it is, um, we would love you. To, would love to see you, old friends and new friends. Come and be part of a great Sunday at Christ Alive Church. So, without further ado, Mark Ivy, I love you, and I'm awful glad you can be with us today. How are you doing? We're great today, Philip. It's uh, awesome to be with you. I hope you guys are doing well. It's a bit chilly in Alabama. I, I moved from Scotland to come to Alabama to get some warmth. And um, to be quite frank with you, this last few days I've been, I've been thinking I've, I've, I've migrated back to Scotland. So uh, I'm, not, I'm getting too old for this winter. So I think I'm going to have to move to the Bahamas. Do you think, do you think the Lord will allow us to have the orphan's hands in the Bahamas? Would, would that be kind of asking too much? That's a great idea. <laughs> That's a great idea. I'm originally from Maine. And, and I don't like snow, I don't like the weather, I don't like it at all. 72 degrees is perfect for me, and I don't like it when it gets cold. Well, I, I was many years in New Brunswick, which is even one, one worse than Maine. And um, we, I we, live on the New Brunswick border. Really? Well, I, I had friends and yeah. ministered for years in New Brunswick, in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And um, in fact, Truth, for full disclosure, I had a girlfriend in Franklin, New Brunswick, and uh, I almost became a Canadian. So there you go. That's uh, 50 year ago history that I'm talking about now. But it's uh, just so great to have you. Let it, give us an update what's happening. Tell us how your Nehemiah's project went on and what, what God did and um, wh wh where the church is at the moment and what you see the Lord doing this time. Well, you know, we did the 52 days of prayer that was out of the book of Nehemiah. Because we felt like that God was calling us to get on the wall and begin to rebuild some things. And what was interesting about it, what we have noticed, is that some of the same challenges that Nehemiah had, we began to experience here. The external challenges, of course, of COVID, but also some of the internal challenges uh, that we begin to see within our own church. And here's what we know. One of the things that Nehemiah was so focused on was not being distracted by the voices and the things that are going on around him. And really, if we could get Christians to stay focused, because one of the goals of the enemy is to distract us from what we're supposed to be doing and what we're supposed to be focused on. And sometimes we're so easily distracted that we miss what God is saying and we miss what God is doing. So what we continue to do is with the help of the Lord is yeah. to stay focused and not be distracted by the stuff that's going on around us. And really that's the only way we're gonna get through what is happening in America and around the world right now. Listen, we cannot listen anymore to the false prophets of the media and those individuals that are trying to create a narrative of how America is. I don't think America wow. is how they're portraying it right now. Absolutely. We've got to listen only to the mind of God and get what the Lord is actually saying and not through the false prophets of the media. My goodness. That is so, you, you nailed that in one. I, I keep saying this to everyone who will listen to me. America is not a racist country. America is the yeah. most gracious, kind, open, forgiving, inclusive country that the world has ever if you move to america mark if you move to scotland mark you'll be a, an american the rest of your life people will never let you be scottish they may you, you get may get to live in the town in, in a house but you will always be the american i came to america you know and I, and, and I became an american and i'm accepted as an american with the rights of an american because this country opens its doors to diversity you know, Philip, I do not believe that
that America is as divided as no. the media would like us to believe. No. I think that's a narrative. And, and the problem is, is that when we start listening to that and we think there's all kinds of division, it's a spirit of division, actually, that has attempted to come into this nation. Boy, that is uh, it's true. really a spirit of fear and division. It'll happen in our churches. It'll happen in our families. I believe it's a false prophecy. I do not believe we're as divided as they would like us to think. I don't know if you've been watching the news the last couple of days, but there's an organization called Veritas. And this guy goes around exposing the yeah. fraudulent nature of the left. In fact, he, he was the one that um, recorded uh, Planned Parenthood selling baby aborted babies parts. How much for a brain? How much for lungs? How much for a heart? And he caught them on videotape selling like an auction, selling body parts of unborn uh, or aborted unborn babies. And um, recently, he, he somehow, um, someone, I guess, at CNN isn't very um, up to speed with their agenda. And they allowed him to listen and record for the last two months. The last two months, he's been listening to the editorial meetings with all the guys in all the leadership of, of CNN and how they've been trying to fo form the news and try to cut down this and don't talk about that and push this thing. And it's exposed CNN as being a fraudulent news organization. And this, this organization is called Veritas. It's not a Christian organization, but it certainly is um, exposing the, 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 the nature. And as you're saying, I believe that there's a demonic spirit in America just now. I've never seen it like this before. Never seen this like this before. Everybody is against something or, or each other. And the Bible clearly tells us that a house divided against itself will not stand. And I believe that that is a de demonic attack in America. The only thing, the only comfort I'm getting is I'm watching the Democratic Party who have benefited from all of this division. And now they're, they're now fighting with it, even, even within themselves. Uh, uh, Obama spoke the other day about uh, uh, the, the uh, the, 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 the slogan to fund the police and he's saying you'll never get to defund the police if you talk about that because people don't want that to happen and so they're using all of this stuff to, to keep this strife going and I believe that the church moving in revival is going to is going to be the answer for America as it has been in the past we just need to get ourselves focused on seeing God moving in our midst again and then getting outside the walls of the church to those that really need to hear the, the true gospel of Jesus. You know, when we're talking about Nehemiah, that was a revival in that entire Absolutely. city. Nehemiah didn't ask for, he didn't ask for uh, a personal revival or a revival in his church. He no. said, God, give me a city. It was a social and revival. God has called us to cities. God's called us to cities. God call, has called us to nations. And yeah. one of the things that the enemy tries to do is to get us focused on singular issues. So for instance, when God promised to give the land to Israel and they go in and they said, oh, it's a good land. We got food, we got grapes, uh, we got land, we got water, all oh, but the giants. Yeah. And it was that one singular issue that distracted them from everything else that God oh. said that he was gonna do. So what's happening in America right now? We're distracted by masks. We're distracted by media. We're distracted by government mandates. Yeah. And this is in the church now. People are focusing on these singular issues. Yes. And instead of seeing the big picture of revival and what God is wanting to do, because this COVID event is a worldwide event, which tells me God's wanting to do something worldwide. Instead of seeing the big picture, of what God is wanting to do. The body of Christ has gotten very myopic and is focusing on singular issues that divide us yeah. instead of unite us. And what God is wanting to bring the church to right now is to a place of prayer and repentance for supernatural spiritual awakening. And if we can just pull back for a minute and get our focus on things above not on things that are on this earth. Yeah. We can bust through all of this. Look, Philip, 
the body of Christ has the power to put a stop to all of this mess right now. Absolutely. Yes. It was Phineas. Listen to this. It was Phineas that ran into the camp of Israel when the plague, the plague was killing thousands in the book of Numbers. It was killing thousands. And Phineas, a representative of the modern day church, ran into the middle of that and put a stop to it. Those two people right in the front of everybody, okay, ran into the tent and were committing immorality in front of everybody. And God said, Phineas has put a stop to the plague. The body of Christ right wow. now, through repentance, has the ability, if we'll do it, to yeah. put a stop to all of this and see an absolute move of the Spirit across this world and get people focused on what we really need to be thinking about, the return of Christ and who the person of Jesus is. You have, you have just put in a nutshell exactly the, the remedy for what we need. You said, you said masks media, and mandate. And those three M's are working overtime to keep us all so stirred up into, into this anger. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to fight this anger all the time because things you, that I see so clearly and so plainly, and you're thinking, why isn't anyone else seeing it? Sometimes you can be right and still be wrong because of the attitude that you have. And, and I'm, uh, I'm going to check myself and try to put the balance on what I'm saying. I believe that America is ripe for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I believe that we're we have being prepared. Been, yes. I, I believe that the church, even with the social media awareness that has been forced upon the church, because let's frank it, let's be frank, we just had a camera stuck somewhere and so we could say, well, we're online. And, and, and that was about the only interest we had in it. And what's happened is in the last year, the church has been forced by the need to become more aware of, of reaching outside of his doors because most of our church folks have been outside of the doors. But outside with our absentee church members is the world watching. And I believe that there are hungry and afraid hearts that are looking for solace and looking for kindness and looking for an answer. I'm, I'm on the board of a church in Tennessee and the pastor had this crazy idea a few weeks ago, a few oh, this, the, actually the idea came a couple of years ago and he's been working and he built, listen, listen to this, this is crazy Mark. He built on, on the edge of the, the campus of his church, a trailer park, an RV trailer for, for folk to come and park their RVs. And, and, and he, I mean, he had to fight everything. And, and I, I would say to myself, you know, Tony, are you sure this is, you know, getting folk to come and stay? I was there three weeks ago and preached. And eight of the people that have just moved in with their RVs from, from Maine and from California, they, they, they come to the Smokies for the winter time, And uh, eight of them got saved in the service that I preached in that would never have been in church, would never have ever heard the gospel. I spoke to the father of this family, a family of four got saved. And he said to me, he says, I had no idea when I came here to just to to be here for the winter time. I had no idea that I was coming to meet God in this place. And and that's an idea, a concept that I would never have thought of, never. And and he said, the reason why we've come to the campground here is because it's part of a church and we knew there'd be no alcohol and there'd be no drink, there'd be no craziness and it'd be, it'd be a safe place. And that's an example of the church thinking outside the box, thinking outside of the concept we've always had, it's got to be this way. I believe that God's going to give us innovation that we don't even know yet. You, you don't know what, what innovation is until it comes. But I believe that God is going to give the church a handle on this crisis. This is going to speak into the hearts and lives of people. And it'll, it will bring the church and the kingdom of God a mighty harvest in these days. I really believe that. You know, I was listening to uh, a news program. And they were talking about the economics of America. Mm-hmm. And this was a few weeks ago. And the man, the economic expert, made this statement. He said, we keep missing 
our economic projections for America because we don't have a model for this. Wow. And, and I thought to myself, if the church keeps doing what we have always done, we're going to miss the projection oh my because Lord. we don't Speak. have a model for what we're doing. And what Speak. God is wanting to do, and we believe God's given us at least six strategies that can help us with a new model. And what churches need to understand is that we have been given a window to do 90 degree turns in the church if we will do it. Mm. We can't continue the way things were. I know some, some churches, well, let's just get back to normal. Let's just get back to what we were doing. We I, don't have a model for there this. There is no normal. No. And if we try to go back to what we were doing and just try to make it like we were before, we will absolutely miss what God is saying and what God is wanting to do right now. Yeah. And we yeah. believe that God has given us some ideas that are different than what we were previously doing yeah. because if we try to do what we've done, we're gonna miss the projection of what God wants to do within his church. Oh my goodness. Boy, that is, so what you're saying is if we keep holding on to what we have and, we, and our hands are closed with what we think we know, in the, the old normal, and we don't release that to God, He can't get anything back into our hands. And that is so He's true. He's to get new wineskin. Yeah. Okay, and we're, we're bucking it. Yeah. Because we, we, we haven't done this before, and we're saying, well, we just need this, we just need that. No, God is saying, I'm trying to make a 90-degree turn in the church. Yeah. Yeah. And really, the leaders of our churches, pastors, elders, board members, they have got to be willing to let go yeah. and say, God, we don't care about attendance. We don't care about money. Okay, now some people just fainted. We don't care about what we look like. We just want what you want. And if we can get there to the place where we only want what God wants, then we can see something supernatural happen. Yeah. We're going to wow. miss it if we try to do what we've always done because we're going to get what we've always gotten. As you're speaking just now, I, I, I believe I've got a God thought. Opportunity. Opportunity is a living thing. Opportunity is a... If you can, if you can imagine opportunity as a living organism, that, that, that it's alive, so it, it will... It will materialize somewhere. I was watching news this morning and um, UPS uh, uh, had, a, had a terrible situation on, uh, on um, Cyber Tuesday because all of the companies that they had contracted with to deliver packages for, all of the, all of the com companies exceeded their contract numbers and UPS could not deliver the packages that were being ordered by the public because, the, because online shopping has now exploded. And UPS has lost uh, money on the stock market today because they, they were unable to capitalize on an opportunity. They never saw the opportunity. So what happens is that, that this, this thing called opportunity, that's a living part of your world. Pastor, it's a living part of your church. And it will materialize somewhere. If you don't give it a, a, a home to, to exist and thrive in, it will go down the street and find someone else that's looking for opportunity and values opportunity and will implement opportunity. And you'll be sitting stuck in an old mode, doing the, old, the same old thing that wasn't working before pandemics and certainly isn't working now, while a kid down the street seeing the opportunity Zoom, for example, Zoom was unheard of, didn't exist until everyone had to stay home. And suddenly this company, the opportunity came knocking at its door and it has exploded. I think it's like three or four times its value on the stock market because people recognize that this is a new way of living. They're telling me now that the brick and mortar stores, the stores, Sears and JCPenney's and all these stores that have always been there in the shopping mall, 
their future is dim because opportunity has realized. We need a, in my house, we need a smoke, a new smoke detector, a hardwired smoke detector. And um, so my son Andrew came in and says, Dad, we need to go, you know, we need to go up to Home Depot and get a, get a, a smoke detector. I says, nah, hold on a second. So I clicked on Amazon. I found one for $8 and I says, why don't I just order? It'll be here in a couple of days. And what's happening is the opportunity is making space for itself in a whole new dimension of life. And the church has got to understand that a crisis re represents or presents to us the opportunity to adapt and change. The message doesn't change. The answer doesn't change. But how we deliver it changes. Because if we didn't change, we'd still be working, um, going by donkey from one church to the other or trying to evangelize by preaching 20 times a day. Opportunity has allowed us for, for me to sit in Alabama, you to sit in North Carolina, and my mom can sit and watch us in Scotland all at the same time. That's opportunity. You know, the prophet Amos, in speaking to Israel, he said, I caused it to rain in one place. And I caused it not to rain in another. Wow. And the place where it did not rain. What withered. a scripture. Oh. And what God is going to do. And this is why we need to be sensitive to the voice of God. Jesus. Is that you could have one place. Pastors listen. You can have one church. With a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And another church five miles down the road. That has died. And the only difference between the two is whether or not they listened to the voice of God and did the necessary shifts, changes, being sensitive to God, and do what he's asking to do right now. Wow, there are churches, Philip, that are not going to come out of this. I know. And the reason is because they are stuck in old models, in old ways, and really... One of the key things, and, and we've got like six things that we're looking at, and one of the key things is this emphasis on prayer. And I will tell you that prayer is given lip service in the body of Christ. Yeah. Find me, though, a place that can be called a house of prayer. Not we really. might spend two or three minutes praying in the worship service. God wants our families. He wants our ministries. And he wants our churches to become houses of prayer, not just teaching on prayer, preaching wow. on prayer, talking about prayer, reading about prayer. And what I've told pastors is stop preaching. Don't preach every week. Designate each certain Sundays when today's a prayer service. Yeah. I will be honest with you. When we started doing this here, when we came back into the building, People would call the office and they wouldn't leave their name, but they, they'd talk to my admin or secretary or something. And they'd say, when is Pastor Mark going to get back to preaching? We just want him to get back to preaching. And they'd ask, well, who can I ask who's calling? And they'd hang up. And the reason that <laughs> we have a difficulty shifting is because you have to actually do something if you're going to pray. You yeah. can't sit there and listen. You have to participate because prayer is actually a participatory process. You have Absolutely. to do something in order yes. to pray. And, and our worship services are very one-sided. You come in, you sit down, everybody in front of you does everything. You don't have to do anything and you can go home. Absolutely. If we're going to have revival, we must come back to the place of prayer and repentance. Now, of course, I'm still preaching, but not necessarily every week. I don't need to. I don't feel like I need to. Mm. And I felt the Lord say to me a few weeks ago, more of you doesn't mean more of Jesus. And uh, <laughs> that's a hard realization. <laughs> yes, it is. You're killing me. <laughs> and, and, yeah. More of me doesn't mean more of Jesus in a worship service. That's so amazing. more of my presence more of my preaching, whatever I'm doing, doesn't mean more of Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. So I'm not true. the center of attention. Jesus is the center Absolutely. of attention. That's amazing. And we must call our churches to prayer 
and repentance yeah. and get the mind of God. Is your church a house of prayer? That's the question. Yeah. Is your family a house of prayer? Is your ministry a house of prayer? And if it isn't, what do we need to do to make the shift? Regardless of what anybody has to say or the complaints or somebody that says, well, I'm going to leave. Let them leave. Do we want the presence of people or do we want the presence of Jesus? Jesus. Because there's an entire generation, and we're seeing this right now, right here. There's an entire generation of young men and women that want the supernatural. They want engagement. They yeah. want the gifts of the spirit operating in their life. 70% of the millennial generation has had a supernatural experience, but it's been with Ouija boards, witchcraft, and other things. And the reason it's been in those forms of, of the supernatural is because we shut it down in the church. We said, we're not going to do tongues interpretation on Sunday morning because it might run people away. We're not going to give prophetic words. Wow. We're not going to operate in the supernatural. And these no, kids in our church, they were hungry for it. They yeah. wanted it. And so they went looking for it somewhere else. And I'm telling you right now, not on my watch here. We're going to open up the door to the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and if deliverance has happened in a worship service, we, we desire it. We want it to take place. Yes. Mark chapter 2, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. And a man cries out. He's demon-possessed. He had been there for years in the synagogue. But nobody ever knew he was demon-possessed. He had a spirit yeah. of religion. Wow. And he was sitting there in the pew. And there was so much power in the room with Jesus. It manifests, and notice what the demon says. Why have you come to interrupt us? Okay? God wants to bring an interruption. But we like our churches the way they are. We Takes like our presence. music the way it is. Yeah. We like our preaching the way it is. And the devil doesn't want anything interrupted. I say, let it get messy. Let it get nutty. Let it get crazy. But let it be a God interruption. If you yeah. want everything all neat, and fine and packaged, it may not be God. That is so true. When, when we are now pouring, when we come to your church this coming Sunday, I'm going to speak on revival. I have yes. been blessed in my life to experience two divine supernatural revivals. I have lived through them. And I'm going to give, I'm going to share with the people what happened before and how it started, and how it was killed. And I've, I've been listening to you talking today, and, and I've been trying to f just get my, in my prayer, my, I don't know about you, but I prayer think. Are you the same way? I pray and put, I, I put things before the Lord, and, and we almost have a discourse of discard that, that's me, this kind of thing. And I, and I, I do that, I, I do that hours a day folk folk would look at me and think well he's not he's not praying oh yes i am I'm, I'm putting these things out towards the father and i'm going to be speaking this weekend and if you're watching us anywhere within the charlotte area we're going to be in newton north carolina this coming sunday morning at christ alive church and i would love you to come and i believe that we're going to experience or at least put in place or affirm what god's been showing mark how revival is going to come and um, wouldn't it be amazing in the Charlotte area where it was so um, on the showcase of America for division this last, you know, the, over this last season, that God could, could bring revival to Char the Charlotte area, starting with folks saying, listen, we don't care about religion. We don't care about, you know, the, the name on the door. We just want to be in his presence. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And I believe that one of the great keys of revival in our life, to have revival and to sustain revival, and that's thanksgiving. You'll, you'll never get to praise. The church, the modern church today has put all this emphasis on praise. The praise team, the praise, you know, the ministry team. And a, a lot of churches will hire guys that were playing in the bar the night before. And, um, you know, they're the ones that are playing in the church service in the morning. And, and it 
Oil and water doesn't mix. I don't care what you say. I don't care how, how you smooth it over. Oil and water doesn't mix. And you can't have guys that are still hung over from the night before in the pub playing music in your church because it just, it just isn't going to work. But the Bible says, enter his gates. When you come in through the doors of the church, even before you get there, you should be in an attitude of, of prayer and thanksgiving before the Lord. And what that does is it plows up the soil of your soul. It gets your soul ready to receive from heaven. And once you've taken care of the thanksgiving point of your life, I mean, it would be a great idea to have every car that comes into your parking lot, to have them a little note, be thankful, enter his gates with thanksgiving. So if ever were to come into the church, you imagine what would happen this coming Sunday if in every church in America, people would come in and spend the first season of the service just standing in his presence and giving thanks for what God has done for us and what God is going to do for us. I think it would change the whole, the whole church. But you'll never get to the praise and worship until you take care of the thanksgiving. That's the, the system of, of addressing God begins with thanksgiving and then comes the praise. If, you, if you've ought against the brother, the Bible says, leave your offering at the altar and go and put it right. Otherwise, your offering won't be received. If we have unthankfulness in our heart, then nothing will be received. Our praise won't be received. Everything goes out of kilter. And I believe that God is looking in these days to have an outpouring in our churches like we've never seen before. Thanksgiving comes first. Prayer and th that's how it's teamed up in the scripture. Prayer and thanksgiving is the beginning, the foundation bid for a move of God. You know, Philip, I've been meeting with a group of teenagers privately. They, they're what I believe, uh, they have a prophetic touch on their life. And out of that group has come teenagers that are organizing their own prayer meetings. They're not organizing an event, which an event is fine. But they, one of the guys has texted me and said, hey, um, can we use the prayer room? I said, absolutely. Uh, they've started this regional prayer group, a group of teenagers, not a worship group, not a preaching group, not, not an individual event group. They've started a group to do nothing but pray. And they've named it, they've called it Rooted. Because this group of younger teenagers has wow. understood that we have to engage God if we're going to engage our culture. And if we can help the rest of us who are older, you know, we're, we're set in our ways, right? Because we know better because we've been doing this a long time sure. and, and we know better. Uh, if we can help those of us who are older to grab a hold of what really rooted us when we first came to know the Lord. Yeah. It was prayer. It was repentance. It was holiness. Living a life that honored the Lord. That's an old term, holiness. It scares people today. Yeah. The outpouring of the Spirit in our life. The thing, I think about my life when I was younger, um, as a teenager. The thing that has rooted me has been prayer and the consistent moves of the Holy Spirit in my church growing up, I was touched by God. It wasn't just sermons, it wasn't just songs, but I had multiple times in the presence of the Lord that I knew that this was real. This was not some religious thing that we were doing. And if we can have a generation experience yeah outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They Jesus. came out with a study a number of years ago um, that upwards, depending on the denomination, anywhere from like 60 to 80 some percent of our teenagers, when they graduate from high school in our churches, walk away from the Lord. And I thought, what are we doing wrong here? We've got our great youth groups. We've got our activities. We've got yeah. our fun. And I'll tell you what we did wrong. We thought that entertaining kids and keeping them uh, having a great time was what they needed. Jesus. What they needed was an encounter with the presence of Jesus. Absolutely. So that when they 
walked out into the world and were confronted with a demonic atmosphere, they could say, wait a minute, I've experienced the power of God. I don't need this because I know the power of God is real. And an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, I believe, is going to come upon this generation. And we are going to see a shaking, not just in America, but we're going to see a shaking around the world of a generation of young men and women who have experienced God. Joel chapter 2, old men dream dreams, young men see visions. Watch this. In order for that young man to see his vision, that old man has to dream his dream. Yeah. So it's not just one or the other. It's both. It is a young man seeing his vision and an old man dreaming his dream. So then the generations come together and there's an outpouring of the Holy um, Spirit from zero to a hundred. As we work this together, I will pour out my spirit upon all, all people. Flesh. Boy, that is the truth. That is amazing. I... I when we had a revival in Scotland, and I'll be talking about this this coming Sunday, I was six years of age, and we had prayer meetings, old-fashioned, all-night tarrying meetings for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was there, I'd fallen asleep during the night, and I'd wakened up and, and prayed some more, just a kid, six years of age. And I came home to our house, and I was crying, and I said to my mom, I says, Mom, I, am, I, I want Jesus to fill me with the Holy Spirit. And she kind of laughed. I can, I, as I'm talking to you, I can, I can take you to the very point in the room this happened. And she kind of laughed at me and she says, Lord Jesus, fill Philip with the Holy Ghost. And something exploded inside me. And, and out of my mouth came this amazing noise of, of work it was and I remember I can I, I was crawling over the furniture just lost in God so the next morning I went to school and I couldn't I could not speak English I could not and I sat I was in Miss Buchan's class in 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 school and I remember sitting petrified that you'd ask me to say something because if I did, I was going to speak in tongues. That's it. And I remember the whole day sitting just, just with this volcano inside me. And our, our house was round the corner. I went to St. Peter's Episcopal School in Hanover Street. And just round the corner, up about 150 yards, was our house on King Street. And I go down to the corner at, at, of Hanover and King Street. I turned the corner and I let loose... <laughs> And I began to, I put my hands up and I'm walking home with my hands up, talking in tongues. My mom was in our porch, sweeping our porch out and she heard this noise. And I can, st I see her head sticking out of the door like this, looking down what the noise was. And it was me. <laughs> and she ran down and grabbed me, took me to the house. That experience, 60 years ago, next year, 60 years years ago, next year, has sustained me in my darkest moments. Because when I thought that nothing was real, when I thought that it was all a scam and a game and a charade, that experience when a wee boy didn't have the sense or the guile to make something up, I remember how it felt when the power of the Holy Ghost was manifest in me and I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you're exactly right. Our, our churches have spent all our money on entertainment. Most of our praise and worship is entertainment. It's, it's, we've moved away from really worshiping God. And what you have is a shallow experience. And I'm telling you, I can see this thing, opportunities coming back in my mind. Opportunity, pastor, listen to me. Opportunity will manifest itself. Your opportunity, your vision, your dream will manifest itself, whether it manifests itself in your life or somewhere else. And it, determined, it is determined by how you are prepared to say, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. We have a girl back in, in uh, the, the, the homes that we have in Moldova. Her name is Catalina. 
and she got saved a few years ago and was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Last summer, she called me. She says, Dad, I want to have a camp. I says, Catalina, there's no camps right now. It's, it's all closed down because of the, the, the COVID-19. And she says, I, I, I really feel Jesus told me to. And I says, when Jesus tells you, you, you lose the argument. I says, well, okay. She went to the chief of police in the town where she wanted to have this camp. And she walked into this communist cop in a communist society and said to them, I want to have a camp. And tell kids about Jesus. And the cop said, okay. She had a camp. I, she called me. She says, the police have said yes. I said, well, how much is it? She says, no. If Jesus told me to have it, he's going to pay for it. A kid in our house, in one of our houses in Vatra Village. 60 kids came. 30 were saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Two weeks ago, she had a, a gathering of these kids that were now in the city going to school and college and university. And um, 40, 50 kids showed up and 10 of them were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now listen to this. And she said, three of them have received the gift of prophecy. In a communist country with a kid from a background that you would not even understand how dark and cold and, and brutal her background has been. But the power of the Holy Ghost has enabled her to, to, to reach, not, I mean, we go, we go along and support, but this is a young lady from our house doing this under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And that's when you know opportunity. If it can happen in a communist country, it can happen in yeah. your church, my brother. It can happen in your house, my sister. If you'll say, God, I'm open to the opportunity to be filled anew and afresh with a, the dynamite of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We do not need to be ashamed anymore of the Holy Spirit. And Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 14, it is missed. He said, tongues is for the unbeliever. Wow. Think of this. Wow. We've said, well, we might turn unbelievers off. Paul said, tongues is for the unbeliever. Well, wait a minute. What is he talking about? Wow. He was saying that when there is a genuine message in tongues, an interpretation in a worship service, yeah. an unbeliever begins to realize if it's real, there's something supernatural here and I need what I just heard. Wow. We have missed this. Yeah. We've changed the theology because of the external misunderstanding of a gift that people have misinterpreted misunderstood and misrepresented all said tongues is for the unbeliever and i want to suggest and pray for our church here and in and the churches in america that we would open the door again for the supernatural yeah. for the divine interruption the divine outpouring of the spirit of god one more time and yeah. let God do whatever he wants to do. And here's what I've learned in my own life as a pastor. Whatever I can release in my own life can be released across the congregation. But if I hold on to it in my own life, yep. it won't be released in that congregation. I have to take my hands off and say, God, today, this place belongs to you. Now, I know there are some, they say, well, you can't have wildfire. You can't have craziness. But my response is, well, first of all, I'd rather have wildfire than no fire because I can deal with the wildfire. <laughs> I can manage that. Absolutely. But I can't create a fire where there is no fire. Uh, and so we don't Why? need to be afraid Please. of getting out of hand. Good leaders know how to deal with things that, that are in the flesh. Okay, Absolutely. but I'd rather have to deal with something in the flesh than try to raise the dead. My, my dad used to say to me all the time, Philip, if you try and kill the wildfire, you'll kill the real fire as well. Because that what happened true. is the people that are wildfire are too dumb to get it anyway. 
but the sensitive souls, the ones that are really seeking God, will feel that it's a rebuke to them, and they'll they'll pull back, and <laughs> instead of understanding that we're we're encouraging this, and um, right. I, I I know by how you're talking, I, I've been listening to you all this hour. We've been talking. Our, our time's almost gone. I, I've been hearing you speak, and the the things the the. the pattern of understanding that you're manifesting is what I heard when I was a boy from my father and that tells me that you are in the in the same um, pattern of of up leading to revival and I really believe this and this Sunday um, we're going to be with you what time is service Sunday morning Mark there's two of them one at 9 30 and one at 11 15 Okay, we will be there in both services. If you're in the Charlotte area, if you're in Newton or anywhere around, maybe you can you can name some of the towns that are nearby you um, to, to let folks Yeah, Hickory, North closer. Carolina, uh, Denver, Lincolnton, Statesville, um, Asheville, even from an hour from Asheville, an hour from Winston-Salem, an hour from Boone. Wow, we, we want you to come to be with us this Sunday, the 6th of December, and we are going to really, uh, I mean, we're going to put out how God, you see, revival, the river of God is always flowing. The Holy Ghost right. River is always alive. It's sparkling. It's dancing. It's, it's unaltered, unchanged. It's our position, our geographical position regarding where the river is that makes the difference. And I'm going to be telling you about angel, angelic manifestations that we've seen, Th things that will, will, will literally create a hunger in your heart for more of God. And, and I, I want you to make an effort. If you're anywhere nearby, please come and meet us and say, listen, we, we, we watch on Daily Faith and we wanted to come and hear about revival today. And if you're hungry, you shall be filled. Mark, we've got three minutes left. Could you please pray and ask God to quicken everybody watching today? that we're hungry for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, we just humble ourselves before Jesus. you in this moment. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you. Lord, we desperately need you. Yes, Lord. God, we have attempted this far too long on our own. Yes, Lord. We've used our programs. We've used our systems. We've used our communication skills. We have lights. We have sound, we have buildings, we have money. Lord, we're asking for you. Yeah. Spirit of God, would you not pass us by? Oh Lord, we pray for churches. We pray for the body of Christ. We pray for those that are watching, even in this moment. May the Spirit of God come upon them. May they be filled with the presence of the Lord. We speak the healing power of Jesus Christ yes, yes. to move upon them. May the miraculous happen as somebody yes. is listening right now. And God, we pray that we won't be the place where it did not rain. God, let us be the place where it rains and rains and rains yes. and rains, God, where there's fruit, where there's prosperity, where there's growth. Yeah. God, we just ask you, God, that you would multiply your presence for the salvation and deliverance of the towns and the cities and the nation yes. that we are living in, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, let me tell you what God is. He is the hunger as well as the bread. And if your heart is hungry for a move of God, that's divine. And I promise you, if you're hungry and thirst, you shall be filled. Listen, this coming Sunday, we are going to be in Newton at Church Alive. And we want you to be with us. Christ Alive, sorry, church. And if you're a first-time visitor, if you're coming, watching Daily Faith, I'm going to give you a free copy of this book. Full House. It is the story of revival in the Camerons. It is the outworking of how God saved a whole family of alcoholics. Every man for 200 years was a drunkard in our town. And my uncle began to pray. Revival begins with prayer. 
And then um, if you come and you go to the table after, or it's outside the foyer, just say, listen, I watch Philip and Pastor on a Daily Faith, and I want to be, uh, uh, he's going to give us a book. We're almost out of time, Mark. Thank you so much for being with us. You are, you are someone that knows the voice of God. And we look forward to being with you this coming Sunday at uh, Christ Alive in Newton at 9.30 and 11. 11.50. I can't wait to be there. 11.15. Time's, 11.15. Time is gone for the day. And we, we just thank you for watching Daily Faith. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their Heavenly Father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.